Dear friends, today we are discussing about the photoelectric effect. Actually, this photoelectric effect is discovered by a scientist J.J. Thompson. He observed this phenomena. When he observing this phenomena, the most widely accepted theory regarding the light is the wave theory of Maxwell. According to wave theory, there are two points. One of the important point is that the light have wave nature. Number two is that the energy of light is proportional to intensity of the light. If you consider these two phenomena, you cannot explain this photoelectric effect and how this photoelectric effect could not be explained by this wave theory. In which way, wave theory namlu veikkanengile ee photoelectric effect namukku explain cheyan pattilla. That a scientist, a famous scientist Einstein Einstein using this quantum theory and his own dual nature of theory explained this photoelectric effect and he got the Nobel Prize for this, this explanation. He got the Nobel Prize for, for the explanation of this photoelectric effect. Now look at the these phenomena. The, first of all, we, we can look at what are the equipments used for this phenomena. It is a evacuated tube, evacuated glass tube. Here there are one electrode. This is connected to the negative terminal. We can call it as cathode. This is the metal surface. You take it as metal surface. Actually, the metal surface is sometimes it, it is most probably we use alkali metals. This is the detector electrode. These two electrodes are connected through an ammeter and battery. Then, now there will be no electricity is flowing through this circuit because here it is this part and this part is an insulator part. It is a vacuum, there is no gases there, it is an insulated part, there will be no current passing through this circuits. Now, when light is incident, incident on this metal surface, when you are applying light with a very low frequency, nothing will happen. If you increase the frequency or energy of the light, it is found that some electrons is ejected from this metal surface and this electrons moves to the positive terminal of the electrode. Definitely electric circuit is there. There is a deflection ammeter also. This phenomena the ejection of electron from the surface of certain metals when light with a minimum frequency applied on a metal certain metal surface is known as photoelectric effect and the emitted electrons are known as we call it as photoelectrons and look at uh, what are the observation they got from here it is that the first point is that there will be the emission of electron from the surface of certain metals when light with suitable energy or suitable frequency strike on it. The minimum amount of energy required for this excitation or ejection is we call it as threshold energy. And uh, next point, uh, every metal have a, a definite threshold energy. For example, in the case of cesium, the threshold energy is X the potassium its value will be y or uh, rubidium its value will be z etc a particular metal have a particular threshold energy that means threshold frequency is constant for a particular metal the next point for example if you uh, you are if the if it is you are taking that is the cesium metals if its threshold energy is equal to 50 you are applying light with the energy 30. You can say that there will be no emission of electrons because this 30 is not enough for the removal of electron from here. If you are applying 70, out of this 70, 50 is used for removal of electron from here. The rest 20 is there. That 20 is used as the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. The next point. If you are applying, if you are giving a light with energy 100, 
50 is used for the removal of electrons and the rest 50 is used for the used as the kinetic energy of electrons so we can say that as the energy of or frequency of the incident light increases we can say that the kinetic energy of photoelectrons also increases that is the energy depends on frequency frequency or frequency of the light one more thing they can understood that you know intensity intensity is nothing but according to quantum theory light is passed in the form of photons intensity is nothing but number of photons in the light radiation number of photons per second in the light radiations it is believed that each photon photon means particles or quantas each photon can emit one electrons if so as the intensity increases intensity increases means number of photons in the radiations also increases we can say that the number of ejected electron also increases so at two point we come to the conclusion that the kinetic energy of photoelectron is proportional to the frequency or energy of the light and next point is that the number of photoelectrons emitted is proportional to the intensity of the light these are the very important observation that you can get from this thomson's experimental model you can write observation when light with the suitable energy strike on with the metal surface electron will be ejected first point the second point light with the any frequency will not be able to eject electrons only the light with the minimum frequency can cause ejection this frequency is known as threshold frequency or threshold energy each metal have a definite threshold frequency i told already told you higher the frequency of light used higher will be the kinetic energy of electrons already discussed now we can say that when you are using blue light and red light you know blue light have higher frequency and higher energy therefore blue light produces more faster electrons i means kinetic energy of that electrons will be high than red light number of photo electrons emitted is proportional to intensity of the light that is intensity as the intensity increases number of photo electron emitted also increases so we can say that bright light yields more photo electrons because bright light have more intensity than dim light with the same frequency but the energy of photo electron will be same that means the energy of photo electron depends only on frequency and not the intensity whether it is bright or dim wherever bright and dim light produces the same the electrons with the same kinetic energy but bright light produces more electrons than dim light because bright light have higher intensity higher number of photons and it can produces higher number of electrons now look at mathematical expression you know of this theory nu is equal to frequency of light nu zero is the threshold frequency h nu is the threshold of uh, threshold energy let the light with energy h nu falls on certain metals then h nu zero amount of energy threshold and others we call it as threshold energy is used to remove the electron from the metal this energy is actually when you strike a, a, a light on a particular atom there is the electron have to be removed for that we have to overcome this attraction between nucleus and these electrons therefore this threshold energy is actually used to remove the electron from this this one but this energy enables the electron to overcome the attraction between nucleus and electron and the rest is imparted as the kinetic energy of the photo electrons the h nu is equal to h nu zero plus half m square that means if you are supplying a light with the energy 100 then 50 joule is used as the threshold energy or to remove the electrons and other 50 is used as the kinetic energy 100 is the supplied energy out of this 100 50 is used to remove the electrons and other 50 is used as the kinetic energy of the electron threshold of free energy is also known as work function sometimes you may ask the question to calculate the work function it is nothing but it is threshold energy now look at the graphical representation look at here kinetic energy of the photoelectrons frequency of light you should not start from here that means uh, this that means that if uh, the that means that uh, you know 
the uh, photoelectric effect will take place only if uh, the light have a certain this uh, this amount of energy uh, frequency that is nu zero that is threshold frequency from up to this point there will be no photoelectric effect and after the frequency of the light increases there will be photoelectric effect therefore kinetic energy of photoelectrons also increases next kinetic energy of photoelectrons against the intensity of radiation we will get a, a straight line i told you that intensity of radiation is independent of kinetic energy of photoelectron now number of photoelectrons intensity of radiation you will get a straight line as the intensity of radiation increases number of photoelectrons also increases significant of photoelectric effect it is against the electromagnetic wave theory of light i told, already told you that according to electromagnetic wave theory the energy of light is proportional to intensity but you can find that energy is independent of intensity from this graph itself this phenomenon is so used to photovoltaic cell you know solar cells le ubhayikunna sadhanamana id alkali metals of low ie especially cesium is best will undergo this phenomena in the ordinary light other metal can also undergo this phenomena by using high energy light like uv therefore in solar cells alkali metals are frequently frequently used and last thing regarding this one is that stopping potential when you apply an external magnetic electric field against the movement of electron the amount of external applied to external voltage that should be supplied to just to movement of photoelectron is known as stopping potential and mathematically you can see that the magnitude of that stopping potential will be equal to kinetic energy so if you know the kinetic energy you can find out v0 v0 is the stopping potential e is the electronic charge this ke you know that is h nu minus h nu 0 already know because already you know that h nu is equal to h nu 0 plus half mv square therefore half mv square is equal to h nu minus h nu 0 so so on knowing this one and this one you can find out this v0 value there are some questions as are asked regarding this uh, questions are asked to calculate the stopping potential okay thank you related to this part i will give you some questions you have to answer that questions you will get a, a thorough idea on this lesson right thank you